Hi, this is Richard Byrne. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to create and play a Kahoot game. This is the most searched for term on free technology for teachers in the last year, so I thought it was time to make a proper video about it. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to sign in as a teacher. And we're going to create a quiz. The quiz is the most popular way to play Kahoot, and it's the most engaging way for students to play as well. So let's go and turn that on. And we'll call this one a quiz about my dogs. Now let's go in and give a description. Just say a fun quiz. This will be available to everyone, which means that when I share it, at the end, anyone who is a Kahoot user can go in and make a copy of the quiz if they want to. We'll play this game in English, and we'll say this is for a training. Now, one of the nice things about Kahoot is that you can list your resource credits down in the bottom of the game. Uh, so if you're finding pictures online, uh, Creative Commons licensed pictures or videos, you can give proper credit for that as well. And there's a nice option to give an intro video at the beginning of the quiz in place of Kahoot's default music and, uh, and visuals. Now let's add a cover image. We'll use this image here. And click go. Now let's add our first question. And we'll say, what is this dog's name? Now you can add a video as your prompt and you can use YouTube to put that video in place or you can just upload an image. We'll put in our answer choices and indicate the correct response. Again, if this was not my picture and it was a picture I'd found somewhere else, I can give a link to that resource. We'll do one more question here. And we'll say, what is this dog's name? Now, one of the things you can do is you can give your students a bit more time to respond to the question. Let's say it, it's a more complicated question. You want to give them 60 seconds to answer. You can do that. Or if you're playing this in a team mode, in which your students are sharing devices, so they, there's three or four huddled around one computer or one iPad, they might need a little bit more time to discuss the correct answer before they submit that. But for this, we'll leave it at the default 20 seconds. Let's add that image and put in some answer choices. and indicate the correct response. Now, one of the nice things you can do here is you can shuffle your question order just by clicking and dragging the questions. You can also duplicate a question. So just click on the duplicate button, duplicate it, and then you can go in and you can edit that question if you want to, or in this case, I'll just delete that question. So let's save that. And now let's go ahead and play it. And we're going to set this up here as a teacher. And you can see all the options I have as a teacher before we press play with our students. We can enable bonuses for a streak of correct responses. You can decide to randomize the order of questions and answers. I like to leave the game pin turned on throughout the game. That way if a student accidentally exits out of the game and they want to get back in, they can do so quickly by seeing the game pin always on the screen in the front of the room. And we'll play this in the classic mode. Now, once this loads, the students will go to kahoot.it and they'll enter a game pin, much like on this iPad here, and we'll go from there. So the students will see this on the screen. We'll enter the game pin here. And you'll see once I've entered the game pin, I'm now asked for a username. So 
So we see the quiz load now. You'll project this in the front of your room. Just click next. And we can see there that Bob is in the lead with 885 points. And Bob sees the results on his screen as well. Same format, the student goes in and answers, and the student now sees that he was correct as the teacher. I'll click next, and I'll end the game. Now, on the feedback and results, I can leave this on so the students can go in and rate the game. Let's say they liked it, they give it a thumbs up, and they feel happy about it, and it appears there are on my teacher screen where I'll click final results. Now I can save my results as a spreadsheet in Google Drive or locally on my computer. I can go in and play it again. I can also use ghost mode and ghost mode will keep my students logged in. They won't have to they will not have to enter the pin number again. It'll keep them logged in and we'll play a second time. And ghost mode is nice if you want to do this activity, let's say at the beginning of class and the end of class to check to see if students improve their understanding of a topic from the beginning to end. So let's go ahead and close that out now. And we'll say, I'm done. Now here in my Kahoot dashboard, let's say I don't have time to create a Kahoot game from scratch. If I go into public Kahoots, I can search for all kinds of games that other people have created and made public. Let's say I want to look for a game about Thanksgiving. And I'm looking for one for a school audience. And I'm looking for one that's a quiz. Let's do a search. And I'll say Kahoot's only made by teachers. There we go. Now, we have a whole bunch here. All right, here's a Thanksgiving quiz that has six questions in it. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So we'll click on it. And I can see that the, the questions that are in here. And I can see that this person didn't add any pictures to that quiz. So I don't want to use that one. Let's go back. And let's take a look at this one here. Thanksgiving fun facts. Let's click on that one. Great. Now this person did use pictures all the way through. And let's go ahead and say duplicate it. Now the reason I'm duplicating this is I want to save it in my account and once I duplicate it I can edit the questions. So in this case there are 12 questions but perhaps I only want to use 10 of them. So I'll go in and we'll remove this question and this question. And maybe my students need a bit more time, so I'll give them 30 seconds on the questions as they go through. And we'll save it. And now I can play it just like any other Kahoot that I created from scratch in my account. So that's a short overview of how to create and play Kahoot games. As always, for more tips and ideas like this, please check out freetechforteachers.com.